Namaste, yogis. My name is Andrew Seeley, and I'm super excited to lead you here at the Aloe Yoga Store in the Grove, Los Angeles. Today, we'll be learning about headstands. So this practice will guide you through the tips needed to get you upside down. Obviously, know your body. Make sure that you're being attuned to how you feel and know that you don't have to do everything in these classes. And if you have neck problems and upper back problems, there's probably plenty of other videos that will suit you better. Make sure to subscribe below and comment to let us know what you think. Have a blessed one. Today, we're gonna get started on our backs. Just so that we can get into the body first, begin to find a deeper awareness of your stillness. We'll bring the heels together, the knees wide, and the hands to heart. Take a deep inhale into your chest. As you exhale, relax your whole spine onto the mat. Nice deep inhale. And as you exhale, just imagine yourself in a headstand, in a perfectly aligned headstand. Breathing just as you're breathing right now. Finding an equal effort and ease in the sensations of your body. Allowing the inhale to be equal to the exhale. Awesome, now let's manifest that vision. Bring the hands to your knees, your knees into your chest. Give yourself a few rolls on the back body. We'll go ahead and warm up the core, extending the feet towards the ceiling. Go ahead and reach for the toes. Interlace your hands and point your pointer fingers towards your toes. Call this the Charlie's Angel Mudra. <laughs> Take a deep inhale here. Right leg will come down and as it does, Reach your fingertips towards the right toes. Inhale up. Exhale, left leg comes down. Reach your fingertips towards the left toes. Inhale up. Exhale down. 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 Use your breath. Inhale, exhale, inhale up, reach for the toes. As you exhale, bring the palms alongside the legs. Lift the shoulder blades up off the mat just a little bit more. Expand through your toes. Use your breath and lower for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one, draw the knees into your chest. Give yourself a few rolls. And we'll use that momentum to bring us to a forward fold. You can bring the feet to hips distance, allowing the head, the neck to cascade over the hips. Bring the hands to opposite elbows and give yourself a little sway side to side. Just beginning to get into the hamstrings, allowing the engagement of the core to allow you to deepen the forward fold as you draw the navel in towards the midline. Relax the head and the neck. Inhale up halfway, lift the chest. Bring your right hand to your left ankle. Left hand reaches up to the sky. Create space. If you'd like, you could put a bend in your right knee. Think of expanding, lifting the chest. If you'd like to deepen the stretch, you can straighten the right leg fully, creating space through your lower back as you draw the navel in towards the midline. See if you can put a little bit more weight into the toes for the last two. And one, left hand comes to your right ankle. Right hand reaches up to the sky. Again, you can put a little bend in the left knee. Find deeper expansion through the chest. Draw the navel in towards the midline if you want to challenge Straighten the left leg, create more space, reach up, breathe up, lengthen up for two and one. Inhale back to center, lift and lengthen the head, exhale full forward fold, inhale rise to stand. 
Exhale, hands to heart center. Nice deep inhale, lift up. Exhale, forward fold. Bring the hands to your mat, step back, plank pose. Nice and strong in the arms. Find length in your legs. Engage your quadriceps so that you can feel the kneecap zipper up towards your hips. Strengthen the arms and wrap the triceps so you can feel the eyes of the elbows pointing back as the inners of the elbows point forward. Press into your fingertips, shift forward with an inhale. Exhale back, inhale forward, exhale back, inhale forward, exhale back, inhale forward, exhale back. Drop your right knee onto the mat, square the foot to the back of the mat, and stack your right hand directly under your right shoulder. Lift your left hand up to the sky. Create one straight line of energy as you lift and lengthen in your core. See if you can reach the left hand up and over. Finding a close-knit integration of your core Lengthen through the fingertips just a little bit more for three, for two, and one. Left hand comes down to the mat, pivot onto the ball of the right leg. Right hand reaches up to the sky. So a gentle twist here, allowing the breath to move up. If you'd like to take this to the next level, you can lift the back heel, creating space while at the same time engaging the core. The lower back is working here. Deep inhale, reach back. Grab that left ankle, lift and lengthen. For three, for two, and one. Nice. Left knee comes onto the mat. Right leg reaches back. Find a stack, left arm directly over the wrist. Reach up. So this integration of the core comes from a little tuck of the pelvis. You should feel that. As you press into your right foot, lift the right hand up. Find an integration of your upper abdominals as you reach the right hand forward. Deepening the inhales, deepening the exhales, creating a sense of engagement. Arm nice and strong for three, for two, and one. Right hand comes down, pivot onto the ball of the back foot. Left hand reaches up creating space in your upper body. Use your core again to find length as you lift the right leg up. Deepening the inhales, deepening the exhales for two and one. Reach back for the ankle. Create even more space. Place your gaze forward. Kick back into the foot. Find a lift, a lengthening. Deep inhales, deep exhales. Gently release. Woohoo! Inhale for Nice cow pose. Exhale for a cat. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale, contract. Inhale, lift and lengthen. As you exhale, draw the navel in towards the midline. Lift the knees, hips up and back, down dog pose. Go ahead and pedal it out. This could be your first down dog of the day. Make sure to bring some breath and balance into your feet, some length into your spine, and some relaxation to your mind. So as we breathe, we find focus. That's really the key in all the inverted postures is focus. So let's go ahead and get to it. Go ahead and drop your knees onto the mat. And the first thing that we'll do is come to sit back onto our heels. Now that our core is nice and warm, we'll explore planting our head on the mat. I'll bring my hands close to the outside of my knees, spreading out the fingers just like chaturanga. I'll plant my head at the apex of the triangle. And what I mean by that is it's literally the top point of a triangle. So if I were to draw a triangle from my hands to my head, the top point would actually be where my head is going to land. Now from here, I'll lift my knees up off of the mat and find a sense of length in my spine. So as you can see, the elbows are stacked directly over the palms. 
My shoulders are drawing onto my back body. I'm pressing into my toes to lift my hips over the crown of my head. So it should start to feel light. As soon as you get your hips a little bit over the crown of the head, you can then stack one knee on top of your elbow and then the other knee on top of your elbow. Same thing, you wanna keep the elbows stacked over the wrist. So we're finding the integrity of our posture, drawing the navel in towards the midline, allowing the core to support the legs as the upper body supports the head. Find stillness for five more breaths, four more breaths, three more breaths, two more breaths, and one. Gently release the feet down to the mat. Come into child's pose, relax your head. Find length through your arms. Just hang out here for a second. Nice, now go ahead and reach the palms forward, drop the elbows onto the mat, and reach the feet back. So this is basically the same exact position that you were just getting into. Obviously the legs are lengthened out here, but in our headstand we want to be in this nice long position where you can feel the shoulder girdle lifting away from the mat, and that's what supports your neck. So we wanna bring the head in alignment with the spine, tucking the chin towards the chest, creating length all the way from the tailbone to the head. Find your core, use it for three more breaths. Two and one. Drop your knees down to the mat. Press into your palms, lift, hips up and back, down dog pose. Deepening the inhales, deepening the exhales here. Put a bend in your knees, look in between your hands. Exhale, step or hop forward. Inhale, up halfway, lift and lengthen the chest. Exhale, full forward fold. Inhale, rise to stand. Exhale, hands to heart center. So we'll go ahead and revisit the headstand once again. Now that you have a little bit more fire in your core, a little bit more stability, we're gonna take the next steps to finding that buoyancy on our head. But first, we're gonna start in Tadasana. So bring your feet together, draw your navel in towards your midline, and see if you can see your toes. Nice, now from there, draw your navel in and find a lift of the upper body while at the same time a groundation into the heels. Now from there, we're gonna bring the hands directly in front of us, just as if we were in a plank pose, and then we're gonna to come to our forearm pose, right? So we're basically in the headstand right now. So how much can you find that sense of buoyancy, that awareness, lifting up through the crown of the head while at the same time keeping the glutes tight, keeping the lower back lengthened, and the abdominals in? So this is the headstand. If you can find that engagement right here, you can also find it upside down. So think of pressing those fingers into what would be the mat, pressing the crown of your head into what would be the mat, and finding length through your legs as you extend towards the sky. So now we're ready to turn this whole entire thing upside down. <laughs> Go ahead and bring your knees onto the mat. Bring your palms on the mat. Bring the crown of the head at the apex of the triangle once more. Press into the toes, lift the knees. Again, we're pressing the hips over, right? So that we can find a stack. Hips stack over the crown of the head. Elbows nice and stern right over the wrist. Knee comes to stack on top of the elbows, right behind the elbows actually, more so towards the triceps. Now we can bring the feet together. Once we have the feet together, we'll find an integration of the core. From there, I'm gonna tuck my chin a little bit just so that I can feel the crown of my head on the mat, the very center. So I don't wanna be on the forehead like this. This could really hurt the neck. And I don't wanna to be too far back because this will encourage you to roll over. You wanna find that middle point, right? From here, I'll squeeze the feet together, 
and lift the knees. If I can sustain this for three breaths, nice and strong, feet together, length in the head, stability in the arms, then I can extend the heels to the sky for the full extent of the posture. So this is the headstand in tripod. Tripod headstand helps us to distribute the weight into the hands and the head. As I find length in my neck, I find buoyancy in my core, and I extend the feet up to really create a sense of integration from the head all the way to the feet. Lower, knees come down to the backs of the triceps, just as we did before. Then the feet can come down to your mat, come into child's pose. Relax, take your time, use your breath. Inhale, rise up. Now, if you just witness that at home and you're like, what the heck, how do I even do that? I don't know how to find my balance. Start with the basics. You can start with the knees on the backs of the elbows and find your balance there. You could also use a wall. Walls are really incredible for helping you to find your balance so that you understand what's straight. And then it also gives you a little bit more security when you think you're gonna fall. So I encourage you to either start with the knees on the elbows or to start up against the wall because it'll really help you find the stability that you need to be able to do your headstand on your mat away from the wall. But for those of us who have tried it and you're like, oof, that felt good, high five to you. Awesome work and know that every single time that you do it, you'll get better, you'll create more awareness in your body and you'll find more alignment in your breath. So make sure that you're breathing in whatever posture you're in. We're gonna try the headstand one more time and I'm gonna give you guys one more cue that I feel will really help you. Bring the hands to the outsides of the knees, plant into the palms. Go ahead and bring the head down to the mat. Lift the knees, stack one knee onto the elbow, the other knee onto the elbow. Draw the feet together, find the lower belly so you can really draw the navel in towards the midline. Now create that sense of lift in the lower belly. As you press your hips back, bring the knees together and extend the feet towards the sky. A really good way to practice safety here is to engage your core and bring your feet towards the back of the mat. That will really help you from falling over, right? Because what happens often is the feet go too far this way and then all of our weight is pointing that way, which means that we probably will fall over. So I want you to keep an engagement of the core so that the feet are actually pressing down towards the ground and then as you integrate, then you can find that straight line. And once you get to that straight line, you really begin to feel light, light like a feather. It's like standing, but on your head. <laughs> awesome work, great job. Now we're gonna cool it down, relax, so that we can bring ourselves back to that sense of awareness. Headstands are a really great way to bring circulation to your head, a really great way to start the day, to bring some fresh energy and some fresh blood into your lungs. It literally turns your whole entire body upside down. And when we invert the body, we help to lengthen the spine and create more oxygenation to the mind. So plant your hands onto your mat, hips up and back, down dog. Take a few deep breaths here. Allow the inhales and the exhales to create more space as you relax your head and your neck. Step your right foot in between the hands. Deep inhale, lift the chest, lengthen. Exhale, bow and straighten. Inhale, lift the chest, lengthen. Exhale, bow and straighten. 
Inhale, lift the chest, lengthen. Exhale, bow and straighten. Hold for three, for two, one. Put a bend in your right knee. Let your left knee come down to the mat. Step right foot back. Lower through knees, chest, chin. Scoop forward. Gentle inhale. Exhale, back to child's pose. Go ahead and tuck your toes, hips up and back, down dog. Left foot steps in between the hands. Inhale, lift the chest, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale, fold and hold. For three, two, and one. Put a bend in your back knee. Draw the left knee back. Knees, chest, chin. Gentle lift. Exhale, come back to child's pose. Relax the head and the neck. And you can bring your hands alongside your body for traditional child's pose. Just allowing your breath to bring some fresh oxygen through the body. Inhale, lift up. Bring the knees together. Bring the right hand up to the left ear. Gently turn the right ear towards the right shoulder. Left hand reaches out, big circles here, creating space in the trapezius muscles. Those are the muscles that hold your neck and make sure to secure your spine, assuring that your cervical spine is safe Gentle circles back. Nice. Draw the chin towards the chest. Still reaching the left fingertips out. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Gentle release. Left hand comes to your right ear. Extend the fingertips out. Gentle circles. Just creating space in the upper trapezius muscles, allowing the neck to release, bringing some fresh oxygen into the muscles that just worked. Maybe you close your eyes here and focus on your breath, allowing the sensation of the stretch to bring a greater focus in your breath. Gentle release as you draw the chin towards the chest. Lengthen out a little bit more through your right fingertips. Inhale back to center. Relax your wrists. Now we'll make our way onto our backs for Shavasana. Just taking 10 deep breaths, allowing yourself to come back into harmony with your inhales and your exhales, allowing all the benefits of the headstand, which is known to be the king of all yoga postures. Allow the benefits of the yoga to fully seep into your being. Just breathe. No expectations, just full body integration. These last five breaths make them the deepest breaths you've taken all day. Your 
next inhale, gently roll onto whichever side of your body feels most open. Bring the knees in close, allowing your head to rest on your bicep like a pillow. And at your own pace, find yourself at a comfortable seated position where spine can be upright. Allow the crown of your head to reach towards the sky as you bring forth fresh oxygen all the way up your spine. Thank you so much for joining me in class today. Namaste.